Good, e yeah. Should good be evening good. and welcome to the 2016 Nova Scotia Scotty Tournaments of Hearts at the Mayflower Curling Club in Halifax, Nova Scotia. My name is Joel McDougall. I'm joined tonight by Jim Nix. We're going to be bringing you all the action from sheet four here at the Mayflower Curling Club, and it is a matchup with significance as the two teams that we have tonight are tied for second as we head towards the playoffs tomorrow. We have Colleen Jones and Jill Brothers Rinks, both at four and two. Winner of this match will earn their spot in the semifinal. The loser may need some help or a tiebreaker depending on what goes on in our other match over on sheet three. Yeah, that's right, Joel. We have um, on their sheet, as you mentioned, Brothers and Jones on sheet three, Arsenal playing Breen. And if, if Marianne Arsenal extends her record to 7 0 here this week, it will mean a tiebreaker tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. between Teresa Breen and, and the loser of the game we have. The winner of our game is, it is in the playoffs, guaranteed. And we're just moments away from getting underway like to take an opportunity now just to recognize the sponsors, of course, that make this event possible. Of course, the title sponsor, Scotty's, been a longtime sponsor of women's curling here in Canada. Tim Hortons, Deloitte, also big partners here that make this event. On hand here is Nova, sorry, the New Scotland Col Clothing Club, Monaghan Square, Mott's Clamato Caesar, Sobeys, Kent, let's build something, and the Printing House. Well, great to have all those sponsors on board. These events can't happen without sponsors, so we certainly appreciate their support. And we are underway as the brothers team with the first shot here tonight. Terry Udall, lead for the brothers rink, gets us underway. Udall, the brothers team throwing the blue rocks. Colleen Jones rink will be throwing the yellow rocks. Yeah, both teams coming into this game after tough losses and uh, looking to bounce back for sure. The the Joe Brothers team gave up a steal of two in the last end this morning to lose their game to Teresa Breen, keeping Teresa's hopes alive for sure and, and putting a little damper on their own. Uh, Colleen Jones had a little bit of a, a rough game and, and dropped her second in a row as well, so... Both teams are, are looking to do a little better tonight. And we see the first shot from Nancy Delahunt, lead for the Jones team. Jones out of the Mayflower Curling Club here in Halifax that's hosting this event, as is Jill Brothers' rank. Yeah, we find most of the competitive teams really come out of the city now. It's where, where obviously the majority of people live and work and as a result uh, curl. So. A lot of them curl here at the Mayflower Club. They also have other clubs in the city in terms of CFB Halifax and Dartmouth and Halifax Curling Club coming off a, a disastrous uh, roof collapse last year are just about ready to open as we as we see here this week. I think they're, pre they're within the next couple of weeks. So lots of opportunities, lots of places to play here in Halifax. And Nancy Delahunt with her second here as her and Terry Udall just play a game of swap with the early shots here in the early end. Four sheets of action going on here on a Friday night. Of course, if you're in the area, it's a great opportunity to catch all the action here. $5 gets you in the door this evening. That'll bump up to 10 just for the single draws as the playoff round starts tomorrow. Of course, you can get the full event pass for $25. And that'll get you into everything. Yeah, and we have for sure four games on the weekend. We have at least two semis in this, one semi on the men's side, one on the ladies' side, and then we also have a final, obviously, on Sunday, and possibly a game tomorrow morning, depending on what happens here tonight. And again, we see Jill Bryan, or sorry, Jennifer Bryan, throwing second stones for the brothers' rink, uh, typically Bliss Joyce. Second for Team Brothers. I know we noticed that last night. Uh, Jim, had you gotten any other information on the reason? Yeah, apparently they, they really just do rotate the, the those two players. And, and so it's not a surprise. I was talking to my sister today who's played against these guys before and actually lost uh, lost to Jillian in the qualifier in Shelburne. 
Um, she said they they do seem to just rotate those those players in and out. So it's not a it's not any reason other than that from what I can what I can gather. Uh, Jennifer Krause or Jennifer or well, it's Bliss, I guess. Bliss Joyce, I think it was. It um, played this morning. Anyway, it was a different player this morning, but they just do rotate the five players with the skip in the third, obviously staying the same. And I think Terry plays all the time too, so maybe it's just second stones, Joe. But they they do rotate somebody in and out. Okay. So as we have a moment as well, too, I'll let you catch up on all the action going on. Obviously, still early, no scores to report. Over on sheet two, Team Dwyer is facing Team Pinckney. Sheet three, Marianne Arsenault's rink. Still undefeated here at this event. Already booked their ticket into the final. Up against Team Breen. Also tied in this for second in this event with a lot riding on that matchup on sheet three. And of course our match here on sheet four and over on sheet five, McAvoy facing Gamble. Yeah, Christy Gamble coming off a couple wins in a row as well. Um, playing very well. They weren't playing that poorly early in the week, but just couldn't seem to get into the win column and have managed to, to chalk up two wins in her last two games. So certainly good job by the, the Christy Gamble team. Christy, as we mentioned numerous times, the chair of this event. And pretty busy leading up to here, so it wouldn't have been uh, unexpected to have a little bit of a slow start. But I did did her first game, and she she played great. So and we have maybe our first little miscue of the match here as Sarah Murphy misses on her shot there. Yeah, you know it's it's early, but it's still a big mess. It gives gives Colleen a chance to. Split the house, although this looks pretty light. Colleen's coming an awful long way out to help sweep, so that's an indication it's probably going to be a little light. Did have a chance to maybe set up a potential two there by making that split. So second chance for Sarah here. Didn't expect her to have much trouble this second time. Line looks good. She'll hit and stay there. Of course, we've mentioned we are here at the Mayflower Curling Club. The crowds have been growing all week. Of course, a Friday night. The crowd is here to see these matches as they mean just that much more as we head into the playoffs here on the weekend. Lots of great atmosphere going on. It's a festive environment. Great seating that they've made available down actually on the sheet. Uh, covered up on sheet one, which is typically used for action. Has a lot of seating, so you can be right out there, or you can be in the nice, comfortable confines of upstairs or downstairs. Great refreshment and food on hand, certainly at the Mayflower Club. So if you're thinking, great place to bring the family and enjoy the festive atmosphere here. Yeah, that's a lot of fun being out on the ice level, actually. it's uh, We haven't had a lot of people out there. A couple nights we've had a, a fair number, but, you know, you just got to remember to wear that extra layer because it is a little bit chilly. Um, but it's a great place. You're close to the action. You're great. I mean, you're really close to G2. So it's uh, it's kind of fun out there. So we're down to Skip Stones here in the fast-paced first end here as Jill Brothers set for her first shot. Jill just a solid player, and you can tell with the delivery there. Slides dead straight at everything and doesn't miss too many shots. I expect her, she's got a lot of experience, so I certainly expect her to be ready for this game. Obviously can't have as much experience as Colleen, nobody in the world does, but uh, still has plenty, so I don't think she'll be awed by the moment at all. I think it's more, you know, more about just playing the game. And she'll hit and roll out, and now Colleen will look to come around that earlier shot that is now playing as a corner guard as she hoped to get it inside the rings, we believe, earlier, but came up short, so now it'll work as a guard. Yeah, it might work out good for Colleen. The rollout by Jill obviously opened up this opportunity. If she had stayed, Colleen would have had to play the hit. But instead, she sort of gets a free shot at getting around the corner guard and maybe still picking up the two this end.
And the first shot from Colleen Jones. Colleen was suffering a little bit with a little bit of vertigo or something early in the week. She had one game where she had to sort of take a couple of breaks, but I think she's pretty much fully recovered from that. And uh, judging by watching her sweep a minute ago, she was pounding that one pretty hard. So I think she must be feeling not too bad now. See the front end drag that one as far as they could. Not as far as I think Jones would have liked. And that's, is it maybe something on this side of the ice? Because that's the second short shot for them. Yeah. That they're misjudging the, the weight. Well, I mentioned before, Joel, what happens sometimes is in practice, everybody's focus is on drawing the button because that's how you determine who has last rock in these games. In the playoff round, that'll be determined by position. But so what happens right now is one team has to play the intern, one team has to play the outturn. So so they focus everything on the, the shot from like the middle or outside of the 8 foot, throwing it down there, having it curled to the center. So when you come up in the first end, if your shot calls for you to throw it right down the middle, quite often that's quite a bit heavier. And so it's not a big surprise. You see that quite often in, in these kinds of tournaments where, where a person will have a little trouble with draw weight down the center of the sheet in the first end. No trouble with takeouts. Jill makes a good one. And she'll hang around at the front of the 12 foot. And Jones will have a chance here to try and hit, roll, and lose her shooter if she chooses to try and blank this one. Yeah, this is the shot that I think Colleen probably became more famous for than anything else, the outturn takeout. She used to have uh, an unbelievable preference for the outturn. I, I don't know that it's quite the same anymore. I think she's a little more balanced now as far as what turn she throws, but for years and years and years, the outturn, ticket, outturn takeout was just uh, so automatic for her that... She just threw that everywhere. That was her preference, and if you were going to let her throw it, that's what she was going to throw. So we get set for the last shot here in the first end. Colleen Jones looking for the Blank here in the first end. May be able to even actually hit and stick as this might not. She's going to hit, get a little roll. Ooh, Ooh and spun that's in. going to bite just a hair of the 12. And she's going to pick up one. Yeah, a bit of a bad break there. So you, you, I, I think you're right, Joel. I think you could have hit it right on the nose and been okay. It wouldn't have been in the circles. Or you hit a little tiny bit less of it and it fl flies out of the circles. Instead, it just hit the perfect spot to to kind of roll and then spin right into the edge of the 12 foot and you end up getting one point. Not the end of the world, but when you're trying not to get one point, that's a, that's a bit of a waste of a hammer. So score one for Jones and the Yellowstones in the first end. She'll give the hammer to Jill Brothers as we get set here for the second end. And Nancy Delahunt will lead us off again. Nancy, probably the best women's lead in for I don't know how many years um, in the country as far as playing that position goes. Obviously, doesn't play quite as much anymore. The, the Jones Ring plays some, but they don't play all over the country like some teams. And you might lose a little bit of that, but probably not very much in Nancy's case. She just throws. She always has that draw weight and. Once again, just makes the shot the way she's supposed to. And places that one just at the top of the eight foot. So Jill says, okay, it's time to th throw up a corner guard and try to score her two points as early in this game as she can. Kind of just ignore that rock in the eight foot and throw the intern corner guard. I think intern, yeah, intern corner guard. Try to set one maybe four or five feet in front of the rings, maybe six feet max, and try to use that one later. We'll have to watch and see if it actually gets used. So often we throw these shots and just never ever get a chance to use them. So we'll see if she has a has the good fortune to be able to make that one work for her this end. Place that one out there. Yeah, good shot. Probably maybe a couple feet longer than you want, but it should do the trick. You really the decision on how far the how far out in front of the rings you want the corner guard really depends on ice. If the ice is curling very well, 
and you can really get around it. You'd like those corner guards to be as tight as you could. If the ice is a little bit straighter, you like them to be a little longer. We're really fortunate here this week to have had great ice and lots of curls, so that's why I say that one might be just a tiny little bit long. Not bad, though. And Colleen Jones will put up what I think was supposed to be a tight center guard on that yellow already in there, but that'll creep into the house itself. Yeah, I think you're right. I think she was looking for Nancy to just be a foot or two short of the rings. Not, again, not the end of the world there, but now Jill can play the hit and roll, whereas if that rock was just even maybe, I don't know, six, eight, probably ten inches shorter, it's not on the circles, and they are not able to play the takeout on that shot. So a little bit of a miss, but it's early in the game. Not Certainly not a big, big problem. And it did certainly show us that they could use the corner guard, but they rolled too far to actually end up using it. But good effort. Good effort and attempt, a good attempt at trying to, to bring that corner guard into play. Certainly the buzz in the building, Joel's a lot more than it was early in the week. It's kind of interesting. Everybody's just a little more interested in what's going on. And... Players are a little more intense, and kind of in a way the fans are a little bit more intense. As the tension ratchets up here as we approach the playoff round here in the weekend. And we'll see here. This is Mary Sue Radford takes out that previous blue stone. She'll roll herself towards the center. A good shot for Mary Sue. Rolled uh, maybe an inch or two too far, but that's a good spot. Nothing wrong with that. Especially this early in the game. Make sure you make contact number one, stay number two, and make the roll number three. And Jill Brothers just contemplating her options here. She discussed trying to roll back in around that corner yard again, but she'll have Jennifer Brine come down on that top yellow rock. She might. Calls for the sweepers here. She gets a double and will lose one, and other one will just remain biting on the back 12 foot. Interesting though there, you saw something that a lot of people would miss, and, and what Jill played there at the end, she called a little bit of an audible in the sense that she knew because of the location of the stones, if she hit the one on the right a little bit thicker, it would actually spin off the other one and back up a little bit behind the corner. And, it did that, it just only went a few inches, but just a, a hair thicker, and it probably goes up goes up and right behind the corner guard. So, uh, great great thought by Jill. Just, you know, didn't quite work, but a heck of a thought, and a really quick thought, because you got to decide those things really quickly. Mary Sue Radford, second shot here. She'll once again remove that blue stone as we trade spots back again here in the second end. Good Jill. shot. Kim Kelly working hard on that one again. I think they're going to have to go real hard on this one, Joel. Looks like it's curling, curling big time. Gets around, will hit, and that one's going to roll at a play. Yeah, I think she just got that one going a little bit. They called the sweeping arm right out of her hand, so she either slid a little bit tight or, or sometimes we say get it going a little bit. Just a little bit of a motion towards the broom, and, and on ice that has lots of curl, usually that's going to be a problem. Kim Kelly, longtime mate for Colleen Jones. With her first shot here in the second end. Also remind everybody watching along at home or wherever you're following the action from, you can follow us along on Twitter. Use the hashtag NSCurl. If you're rooting for either of the teams, obviously, hashtag Team Jones or hashtag Team Brothers and as well too, Team Brothers has their own handle, Team J Bro NS. Love to hear where people are watching from, who they're rooting for. Curling fans or just fans of the teams in general. Yeah, it's been interesting this week. We've got a couple of followers from Manitoba that have been active in letting us know, letting us know they're watching, and some people out west as well. So it's it's pretty interesting where everybody watches the game from. 
it's a different changing world in that you can do that nowadays and it's uh it's pretty cool to be able to kind of watch everything from all around the world so a good hit and stick by the the brothers team and Jones now will try to remove that. She's really, really quite willing. She always is willing, but to the, in this end for sure, willing to just go up and down the sheet, try to hit and stay, and make Jill have to do something on her last one to, to score just one point. This one's going to have to do some real curling before it has a chance of staying. And it does. We'll roll out a little bit, but manage to stay mostly in the eight foot. It did, but this gives Jill a chance to what we mentioned earlier about using the corner guard. This is a great situation for her because she has a corner guard out front and she has the yellow one behind the tee line that she can use as a as a catcher on her stone. So this is a the perfect example of of when and how to use a corner guard. And this is a, a, a really good opportunity for brothers to set up a two here. So Sarah Murphy with the next shot here. Looking to capitalize on this opportunity for Team Brothers with the hammer here in the second end after Colleen Jones was forced to take one. Not getting her shooter to roll out in the first end. This one's not really hooking over the way that uh, Joe would like. I don't know if it was really, I think just a case of a hair too much ice really. It, the weight was really nice and... I'm guessing that Sarah probably threw it pretty good because they usually do these guys. and um, Didn't really curl, just basically wide open. So. so that might put a little bit of heat on Jill if Colleen makes this hit and stays even right there or just rolls a little bit behind the corner guard. I don't think she'd really want to roll all the way over. But it does make it uh, a bit of a challenge for Jill to, to score more than one point and maybe even have a little bit of a tough shot to, to score. But first, you got to hit it, and you got to stay secondly, and and then see what happens. We have a moment here. We'll catch up on some of the other scores across the rink. Dwyer opened up with a three in the first end over Pinckney over on sheet two. Arsenault took one in the first as well. Team Gamble took one in the first over the McAvoy rink. Yeah, it's kind of nice that we don't have anybody looking for their first win out here right now. Anyways, at least everybody has one win on the board. And, kind of, you know, it is a nice feeling at least uh, if you haven't had a great week to not get shut out. I see Jones move out the blue. She'll roll her other shot just beyond the rings. She'll keep two there. And we'll yeah. see as Brothers discusses. Yeah, that was not quite the plan, obviously, but not... Not a terrible result. You remove the, the shot stone and you are sitting too. That can usually not be a bad thing. Jill will probably try to hit, and I'm guessing she's going to try to hit and roll a little bit to the right. Maybe get in front of that yellow counter that's half in the 12 foot at the back there. See on the overhead, just bottom right. Oh, whatever time that would be, 422, I think. So we get set for skips. The brothers skip stones here in the second end with the hammer. Important for Jill to stay here because even if you stay and maybe Colleen makes a roll, rolls out or rolls towards the other one, you might get a chance to blank if, if not get your two. So big shot to stay. If you don't, Colleen's going to split the house and go way over behind that corner guard and you're just not going to have that opportunity. It's real sick. And have a little roll towards the center. Yeah, that's fine. That's a good throw for Jill. And you see Jill brother saying she'll take it. Yep. So maybe not uh, the perfect shot, but certainly not a bad result for her. Yeah. Yeah, those first three, four shots of the game, you, you know, you want to make them, but you particularly you want to have good slides. You want to get in a bit of a groove, feel good about how you're coming out of the hack and releasing the stone and all that sort of thing. So... Obviously, she felt pretty good about how she threw that one, and and she's okay with that. If she has to take one here, she'll take one and go to the third end with in a tie game. So Colleen Jones getting set here for her final shot in the second end. Up one over Jill Brothers' rink.
Kelly sweeping this one under Jones's hands. They'll get right off it here. Looks like they're going to catch a little bit of it. They'll roll just to the other side of the button and sit there. Good throw by Colleen. You know, it's um, she might be 50-something nowadays, but, boy, she still throws the rock really good. And still works at the game, from what I understand, here at the club. She still practices all the time. and So give her credit. She's just, she's just a great athlete and a great curler. So just going to throw the intern takeout. Just the same sort of shot she just threw. A little different location and hit this one on the nose and, and take her point and move on. Final shot here, the second end. Jill Brothers looking to bring this one back to level. Score her one. Wow, this one's going really hard. See if the, the girls can hold it. it. And they hit, do. And it'll roll a little bit, but certainly not far enough to put her in any danger. And Jill Brothers and the Blue Stones will score one in the second end as we're back to level. So and they trade singles in the first two ends. Yeah, it was kind of ironic that on the last shot of the end is when you make the perfect roll behind the corner guard. <laughs> it's kind of uh, kind of the way it goes all the time. So we'll get right back to the action here as Terry Udall will lead things off for us here in the third end. Again, we'll take another moment to recognize the sponsors of course the title sponsors for the Scotties Tournament of Hearts is Scotties also like to mention East Coast Credit Union title sponsor for the men's tankard also going on this is the first year we have the two events being hosted at the same time not the same time each draw is for either the men's or the women's but they do go one for one of course Tim Hortons is here supplying us with great hot coffee and of course you can find a Tim Hortons anywhere. <laughs> yeah, there's one right around the corner. It's about 100 yards from the club. That's right. Deloitte <laughs> is also a major sponsor here that helps us put this on. Also like to recognize New Scotland Clothing Company. They're on hand with great products. Monaghan Square, a new building development going up just in the area as well. Mott's Clamato Caesar, Sobeys, Kent, and the Printing House. All of which would make this event possible. So we see the center guard that was put up by Terry Udall for the brothers' rink. And Colleen Jones looking like she was asking Della Hunt to come in around that. Yeah, I think that's the shot they called for sure. Came up a little short. I don't know if that's terrible. I'm thinking that that's not a not a bad spot for for Nancy Stone if you're going to play around the center guard. Sometimes it's. Uh, it's interesting to see. I, I would think some teams might you take advantage of just drawing to the wings. I haven't seen that all week long, though. So, um, you know, that that's a little bit of a, a defensive sort of approach to the game. But some of these teams play pretty defensively, so I'm a little surprised nobody's done that. So Jill, Jill will try to have Terry come around this. Coming around on the opposite side. Murphy and Brian do some good sweeping, and they get that one into the top eight. Not fully covered, though. Yeah, still pretty good shot, though. Pretty good shot for Terry. Brian will try to remove it, and I don't know if she'll try to get the inside roll. It's a pretty tough task to get the inside roll, so she may look to roll a little bit to the outside here. Or if she could get to the nose, that wouldn't be too bad either. Just dusting it on the way down, making sure it doesn't pick anything up. Had a few picks this week. Not terrible, but sometimes the ice gets just a little bit soft and, and rocks tend to grab. And Della Hunt will remove that one. Jill tries it again. Different player this time. We'll see if Jennifer can hook one around here. Some teams actually do have a couple of different releases to try to get rocks to really move across the sheet. and um, it, it, That's pretty sophisticated, and there's not many, but certainly 
you know, the team that comes to mind all the time, I guess, is Rachel Holman's team. Would every shot seem to discuss how you're going to throw it. Uh, not too many teams have that much ability, but you can manipulate it a little bit with the amount of handle you give it. If you want it to really curl a little more, give it a little less handle. And if you want it to run a little straighter, give it a little more handle. Pretty good shot, but a little deep. So Mary Sue Radford throws now for the Jones rink. Looked like their plan is to come back down on top of that shot from Brine that's at the back eight foot. Yeah, pretty good opportunity for Colleen here. If she can get this top of the top of the button, top of the four foot, that would be a pretty good spot. Jones out to give this one a hand. See if they can't drag this one a little deeper. And that'll rest directly up on the button. Yeah, I think probably leaving that about two feet shorter might have been better, but I suppose it could have been removed if it if it had stayed a little bit open. So perhaps that's why Colleen felt the need to, to take it that far. Girls working hard on this one. Can hear the call hard for line as they were get it past the front guard and that one starts to come across. And will be well buried, but out in front. Good shot for Jill's team though. I, the, the thing to think about here and for the viewers at home, generally speaking in a, in a really tight game, early on especially, when you do not have last rock, your first goal isn't to score, but it's to limit the other team to one, no more than one point. So often in club curling we see teams that, and even in some, you know, maybe slightly lower competitive levels, teams that, that just feel they have to score all the time. So they're always trying to be shot rocking. And quite often that results in giving up a two or three ender that you don't need to give up. When you have last rock, do your thing, go after it. But when you don't, play a little bit of defense. It's a pretty good shot. I, You know, it's... Uh, Colleen's going to have a hard time, though, managing to get more than one point here, I think, and unless Jill's team does something a little bit wrong. Sarah Murphy now set to throw her first shot here in the third end. We're all square at one between Colleen Jones Rink and Jill Brothers Rink, both head of the Mayflower Curling Club, host of this year's event. That's where we're calling all the action from. This looks like a pretty good shot here. Wow. Squeezes that, that one just by the yellow. That is a great shot. It's not shot, I know, but it's in a terrific spot for the brothers team to be able to utilize and just slash a little bit on the outside, and that yellow one's gone. So great shot for Sarah Murphy. I don't think Colleen can do a whole heck of a lot about it. Be interesting to see what she plays here. She may just peel the guard off and or run the guard back in and try to open that up because she's in a little bit of trouble. Gonna have a little chat as she asks Kim Kelly back to the other end of the sheet to have a little discussion about the opportunity here. With the Jones team, you will see that quite frequently that, that Kim talks to Colleen about, about what shot to play. Certainly Nancy gets involved as well, but Kim seems to be the one person that Colleen really turns to and when she's not quite sure what what she wants to do. Mary Sue tends to stay a little bit out of those conversations, probably just being sort of the rookie on the team in terms of uh, duration that she's worked. All these other three girls have curled together for, I don't know, a long time. I better not say how many years. What I do know is Colleen talked about the first tournament of hearts being there and winning that in 1982. So she's been in the game a long time. Here is Kim Kelly Shard as they look like they're going to peel off that front guard of the brothers rink. Yeah, I played the straight peel. I, I thought at first she was indicating maybe running it towards the yellow one and trying to maybe get a couple of them, but she must have changed her mind on that. I'm sure Jill's throwing some kind of a guard here. 
Probably trying to guard that yellow straight back so that Colleen can't make the, the yellow on blue double, but I still think Colleen's team's in, in some trouble in this end. They're just uh, one shot away from having a, a really tough time scoring. Front end sweeping hard on this shot from Sarah Murphy. They're trying to get this one. Got to get it over the hog line. And do they ever. It's going to be a very... That's a huge miss. Uh, you know, it's tough to understand sometimes what happens to us as curlers. You, you know, she throws an absolutely perfect shot right to the top of the button on her first one. And I know you're trying to throw it lighter, but you've got a lot of room to work with there. You've got 21 feet from, I think, the hog line to the tee line. And came up pretty short. So Kim Kelly with her second shot. As they look there, Jones will now attack her own stone at the front of the house. And we'll remove one of the blue stones and open things up a little bit. Yeah, very different looking landscape now than before that shot for sure. Um, but they're still in decent shape as far as that goes, but you're gonna have to be a little careful now because Colleen does have last rock and, and you're only um, one shot away from maybe giving up a two or three. That was the shot that we expected her to play if once Sarah missed that guard. She played it, played it well, like Kim Kelly always does. This has changed around a little bit. I think you're gonna see Jill, yeah, she's indicating there maybe a little hit and roll on that, that one on the outside. I, I, you know, even though she only has, she's only looking at, you know, she's only counting sort of second shot right now, but I think she's just a little bit concerned about what might happen if she just decides to guard or something like that because there are a couple runs there that, that the Jones team could make and remove that blue number two. So Jill Brothers gets set for her first shot here. Third end all square at one. As we continue to play here, both teams, as mentioned, tied for second place. Winner moves on to the semifinals. Loser may still go on, but that depends on what happens over on sheet three, where Team Breen is all square with one with the Arsenal rink. Still trying to make the little roll in here. I don't think she's gonna roll, but, but still not a bad shot. She'll hit and stick for the most part. And now we shall see I think she, Colleen's gonna have to play her yellow one back in order to get rid of that blue, so um, she'll try to hit this maybe, I'm pretty sure she'll play that. I don't think she'll play that out turn through the hole, but maybe. I think if it's me, I'm throwing the yellow one straight back. You can play whatever weight you like to play here. You can play hack weight, board weight, control weight. You can throw full takeout weight, whatever you like. Just hit it in the right place and you could be sitting two after this and with no op no possibility of brothers removing the both rocks. So I think you have to play it. If it goes a goes awry, then you have a problem, but still it's the only thing you really have or else you're gonna only score one point or no points. And you can see them discussing just that and what the reactions will be. And Colleen Consulting with Nancy Delahunt. Lead for the rink, but holds the broom on Colleen's shots. Colleen hollered down to, to Kim and Mary Sue down here. What do you guys like? And sounds like they like some sort of run back here, or tap up, or whatever you want to play on this yellow one. Oh. She's not throwing it very hard, I'll tell you that. That's a lot of ice. I don't think she's playing straight guard, but she could be, I suppose. I guess we'll have to wait, Joel, until it's on his way to figure it out. We shall see. Now, it did see all the movements around. It did seem like they were talking about the run back on their own. Colleen did motion one time about looking at that blue stone that their broom is closest to and a hit roll towards the center, but they seem to get away from that, so I... I yeah, I think it's it's one of those shots that it could set something up, possibly for her last one, but it's also um, 
and they're still going to take a little look at it. So, Yeah, they've actually called a timeout to discuss this one really early in the game for a timeout, but they feel feel this is a key point in the game and an important decision, so they're going to try, try to go down and have a little discussion about what to play. Certainly is. Obviously, tend to see these timeouts used later on in a match, but with everything that's riding on this, as mentioned, the victor will go into the semifinals automatically. Jones possibly sensing that if she makes the right decision here, there's a chance for picking up two, if not more, in this end that could set her up. Or, as well, too, looking at the consequences that if she does make the wrong decision and not make the shot, that could leave open for a steal of more than one, potentially. Yeah, exactly. It, it, no question, it's a big shot. You got, you do have to uh, think about this one a little bit, what you want to play. Because she has hammer is the reason I think that you play the front yellow one, and I don't I don't think you could really be, you know, I don't think you have to worry about a big disaster happening with it. It's just a, a straight takeout at whatever weight you like to throw. And So after discussion... We're set here, Jones' first shot. So I'm still not sure, if she's, you might be right here. She might be playing the in off off that blue one. Yeah, you know what, it appears what? it is. Good call, Joel. Gotta hold the line, she's gonna get a little tick. And that'll push, not enough though, it'll push the blue stone onto shot rock and move that off the button and now it's brothers counting one. Yeah, it's uh, sort of a disaster for Colleen there. It, I don't, I don't totally understand the shot. I really don't see the benefit of that shot. I think that was a, you know, you, it, it's a lot harder to get make something good out of that shot than just make something good out of the straight back. And and now you also don't have shot rock. So, so I can't really agree with the call on that one. But if she had made it, it would have obviously been better. So you can't just totally second guess it. It's you know, just because you miss it doesn't make it a bad call, but I just think it was a difficult shot, much more difficult than it had to be. I think now Jill will probably play, be playing the straight guard here, high guard on the yellow one, so Colleen can't run it back. And, and Colleen's going to have a tough time scoring. I think she'll have to probably play an angle slash on the, the top yellow one, and if she makes it, it's for two, though. Lots of possibilities here in the third end as we get Jill Brothers' first stone. Sorry, this is Jill Brothers' second shot. Yeah, this one's way out there, but it will curl. It's just a matter of if it'll curl far enough before it stops. Ice is really quick. Tell watching that go down there sure isn't trying to stop, and it wasn't going very fast. So as I mentioned, Colleen's going to Go out here now and try this angle raise takeout. And if she makes it, it's for two, so. Maybe she was just trying to lull Jill to sleep there a little bit and leave this shot, shot for her. Same time, angle raise is never never a simple shot. And it got, I just got the sense, though, with the timeout that Jones might have thought she had a possibility for more than two in this end, and just with that missed shot, a missed opportunity. Yeah, well, absolutely, no question about that. And like I said, it, it's had she been able to make that shot, it might have set something up that was pretty good. Um, I'm just not quite sure I can figure out what it was. So anyway, Colleen now will play that out turn, her infamous out turn, and I would expect her to be pretty close on this. Kim Kelly again sweeping. Kim's been sort of stuck with doing all the sweeping as the Jones team implements the uh, the one sweeper theory. This is going to be. A big, big moment here as that's going to be a steal of three for Jill Brothers. Wow, that was big. Steal of three for Blue Jill Brothers here in the third end as the momentum switches after a couple missed opportunities by Colleen Jones. And Jill Brothers will take it and she'll jump out to a 4-1 lead. Yeah, you know, in fairness to Colleen, too, sometimes you see a shot and you're like, well, you, you play this shot, you might run the risk of doing something like that, but I never really saw that happening at all, so yeah, that was just real bad luck. 
But she's in a big hole now, so she's going to have to work hard for the rest of the game probably and certainly for the next few ends to get back to, to somewhere around even. Well, we'll get right back at it here for the fourth end and Terry Udall after a big steal of three for <coughs> the brothers rink. Murphy and Brine on the brooms here dragging this one. She'll try to put this right into the top of the forefoot. She doesn't really want to throw a guard up there right now and she knows Colleen's going to not play anything other than a corner guard or a come around. And um, Joe would probably like to keep the game pretty simple for a couple of ends. Now with the three-point lead, that's usually the plan. Nancy Delahunt will be asked to throw a corner guard. This turn on her, the outturn side. Light sweeping from... The front end of Kelly and Radford. Bring that one, that one will curl out to the wing. Yeah, good spot. That's a good spot for a corner guard. She'll play in basically a, f well, she, okay, she's gonna go around maybe now. Uh, maybe she was playing a little tap on the front one, but it sounds like now she's gonna, or it looks like now that she's gonna go right around it. A little bit of a tough shot with the stagger the way it is, but We'll see. She doesn't get a lot of ice, so I'm not totally sure if she's playing the come around or playing the tap, but either way, it's a sort of the same result at the end of the day if you can make it. Yes, they're trying to keep the line on this one as it starts to break across. This one is not going to get past that set of right, and they'll try and just bump it back. It's interesting seeing the Jill Brothers team. It was one of the, the more travel teams and successful teams here in Atlantic Canada. Um, is not one of the teams that so far seems to be using the directional sweeping thing at all. They basically just said, well, we're going to continue with the, the standard that we know. And I, I think sometimes that's not a bad decision, certainly until after this event's over anyways, because it's, it's, um, it's a difficult thing to learn and understand and everything else about it. So... As opposed to you see Colleen's team where they are definitely giving it a go. But I, I think it's probably a wise decision that they made here just to say, okay, well, let's just sweep the way we always sweep. And when it's all done, we'll figure out how to how that other stuff works. And we'll work on it. And by next year, we'll we'll be able to utilize it totally. We see Nancy Tillahunt take out the blues at the front. One will remain there. Now Jill Brothers will set to peeling off this corner guard. Good shot by Jen there, Jennifer Bryan playing the peel. This team throws a, throws a rock so well that you know, when they decide to play defense, I think they're, they're gonna play it darn, pretty darn well. Of course they play everything pretty darn well, so maybe that's not a a big surprise. Mary Sue throwing back up the corner guard, I believe, and it's a good call. You might, for the viewers at home, they might be thinking, "What is she doing, guarding the other team's rock in the house?" But that rock is certainly not one that she's worried about scoring, and she'd like to be able to utilize it afterwards. If she ever gets a miss on this corner guard, it comes around the corner guard. Then all of a sudden that blue rock's a problem for Jill Brothers team. So good call, good spot, nice shot. Now Jill will try to eliminate that stone once again. Exact same shot for Jennifer Bryant. It's always nice when you have two shots in a row. It's even nicer if you made the first one. So this looks fine, just needs to curl maybe a little bit more, but I think it's gonna be okay. And she gets rid of both yellow stones, maybe. Jill's going to have to work that one to get it out. It's going to hang on there at the back of the 12. Yeah, a little bit of bad luck. But, you know, that's just the difference really in, in how hard the girls throw compared to maybe how hard the guys throw. Because most of the guys' teams would, would have thrown that quite a bit harder than that. And even if they hit all the rocks in the same place, the yellow one would be gone. So, 
and something that maybe this team needs to work on for the future as well. Just say, well, we you know we all slide really well. We can certainly throw it harder than that. So let's pump it up a little bit. And Sue Radford here with her shot for the Jones Rink. Here in the fourth end, big swing in the last end. as Jill Brothers stole three in the third to jump out to a 4-1 lead. Of course, we mentioned it, and we'll probably mention it again before we're done. The winner of this one moving on to the semifinals tomorrow. Yeah, it really is a big game, no question about it. You know, so the loser's still hoping to play tomorrow, but much better to guarantee yourself a spot with a victory in this one. So in the men's game today, we there was the same similar opportunity in the men's game that depending on who won those last two games, there could have been a tiebreaker and they needed, a, you know, the Stuart Thompson team ended up on the short end of the stick and was eliminated from the playoffs. Needed uh, needed to have Stevens and Adams both win. Unfortunately, he was playing Steve, Stevens and Stevens beat him, but that would have been okay if Sean Adams had have defeated ja Jamie Murphy. He would have still had a chance at the tiebreaker, but fortunately for... For Stewart, that didn't happen. Sean, Jamie, Jamie defeated Sean and knocked Stewart out of the out of the playoff picture. A lot of hit and roll in the Jones rink with two now sitting at the back of the house. One biting the back four. One nipping on at the back twelve. Yeah, great shot by Kim Kelly. No surprise again. Kim just makes them all. So the nice thing here is that you've got Jill thinking, and even though she has a three-one or a three-point lead, rather. It's a little bit of a difficult call here. You really, your gut tells you you don't want to be drawing because you have a three-point lead. But if you don't draw, what else do you do? Well, you either run the blue one and hope you pick something up or you just go ahead and draw. Or you can hit this open one, which she might be going to play, but I really don't know that it's a great shot because Jones is going to come right around the guard again, and you're probably going to be looking at three here in a minute. I think that... That you might as well go ahead and play the draw here myself. So Sarah Murphy now for the brothers rink. Going after the Jones Stone hanging on at the back 12. She'll get the hit and the roll and that one will exit the back of the house. Yeah, there wasn't, no, oh, sorry, Joel. Oh, just was going to remind everybody watching at home, follow along on Twitter, use the hashtag NSCurl. I've had lots of great comments from people watching across the province and really across the country and a few outside as well, catching all the action of the Tankard and the Scotties here this week. Yeah, there wasn't, a, I was going to say, there wasn't really a good place for Joel to roll with that one anyways, to be honest. I mean, staying, I guess, would be good, but where it was, if you, you wouldn't want to roll behind the yellow one. So there wasn't a good spot. Kim has a chance to really put some heat on here, but I think she's a little warm, a little warm on this one. That's not a good thing. Well, I think that Joel, oh, she's telling her to draw. I thought that this one would be from where I sit. Uh, can you see Joel? Is she, can she see about half of that rock? Uh, half, possibly. Possibly? That might be an optimistic look at it. But I would thought I would have thought yeah, the way Joel be. can throw it, yeah, that she would take a run at this. I think you can eliminate both the yellow ones as long as you're somewhere close to that guard on the way by. But she's gonna play the freeze. Gutsy call. Make it. It's beautiful. You don't make it. Not quite so beautiful. But you're at that point in the competition. I think that when you're if you're gonna move on, you better plan on making every shot and. You better think you're going to make every shot because you've only got two or three games left in this competition and somebody's going to be going to Alberta when it's done. Might as well be you. And the only way it's going to be you if you make all your shots. So Jill throwing the intern freeze. First of the skip stones here in the fourth end. Jill Brothers looking to come down and Freeze into the two yellow stones sitting on the button in the four back four. This looks really good. Jennifer Bruin and Terry Udall 
bring that one just to the top of the button. Not frozen, but. Yeah, not quite there. Still a really good shot, though. It's pretty difficult to remove and stay. Kim coming down. She wasn't going to wait to be asked this time. She certainly has something in mind as far as what gets played. Looks like they're all on the same page. She's leaving, shaking her head yes. And I don't know what they're playing, but they all agree with whatever it is. So obviously got to be trying to move the blue one. It's just a matter of how and how far, basically. And I'm thinking she's probably going to be playing somewhere around hack weight, trying to hit about a quarter of a rock and bump it back to the back of the 12 foot, maybe roll over here in the 8 foot, be sitting three when you're done. Saying, okay, Jill, try to do it again. As we get set here for Colleen Jones, first shot here in the fourth end. Kim Kelly sweeping on her side here. Got the line, get it by. But hits it a little on the nose. You know, if, if, if teams are gonna, I'm gonna be a little critical, if teams are gonna use that directional sweeping system, they better figure it out because really Kim was on the wrong side to be trying to make that shot unless they were playing something different than I think they were playing. And I'm assuming they were trying to move that rock sideways now. And if they were, she was on, she was sweeping on the wrong side. It should have been Mary Sue that was sweeping. Hold that rock a little straighter. Now, if all they wanted to do was bump that back and rattle them around a little bit, then that's fine. But I, I can't quite imagine that that would have been what they wanted to do on that one. It certainly was movable and gettable, even if you just pick it out. Colleen in real danger here, giving up another steal. Steal a one only, but that would put her 5-1 down after four ends. And Jill Brothers with their final stone here in the fourth end. Just keeping it clean at the moment. Just keeping it clean. As this one's gonna come to rest just alongside the other blue stone guarding that center line. It's a pretty good spot. Colleen's going to have to decide if she wants to run a blue stone onto her stone, and that's always a little bit risky. Just uh, mentioned on sheet five, they only mentioned because Julie McAvoy, who's been struggling to get on the board over there, has just had a, made a really nice hit and stay looking at, I don't know, a whole lot, at least three or four yellow ones. So she's in the game now, down 3-1 after four against Christy Gamble. Colleen's still thinking about this one. Burning up a fair bit of time in this end, but they did play an end or two pretty simply, so they didn't use a whole lot of time in those ends. And looking at the clocks, looks like they're really not in too much trouble yet for time. So the shot here is to run the blue one onto the yellow one, onto the blue one, and maybe pop it through that hole for three, possibly. But... It's hard. <laughs> Not an easy shot to say the least, but with great risk comes great rewards. Yeah, good point, good point. Sometimes. Or great <laughs> misfortune. <laughs> yeah. We saw that the last end, and that was un that was really unfortunate, not even seeing that that would happen. Only looks like she threw this one pretty good. It's got a curl, though. Shot is away. See Mary Sue trying to make it curl. They haven't quite got that figured out. They really have the wrong angle on the broom and all we'll that stuff. on that, and it'll be another steal, steal of one for Jill Brothers as she's stolen the last two ends. Three and now one, so another one for the blue. That'll jump out another lead for Jill Brothers. 
Just like to take note, Paul Brothers, anchor of the Global Morning Show, he's watching at home. Not necessarily our match, I think. Or sorry, yeah, I think he's just uh, certainly got a bit of a bias as I believe he's rooting for uh, Jill Brothers. Yeah, I'm thinking he would be. If he's not, he's going to be in big trouble when Jill does get home. Giving us a great job from the booth, guys. We appreciate it. As we get set here for the fifth end. Brothers Rink now up five to one. As we begin the fifth end, and Terry Udall will get us started again. Yeah, this is, I don't know, this, I'm assuming this one must have grabbed something. I can't imagine that Terry would have thrown it that light. Definitely would have been in the house, wanted it in the house, and you know, the, the tolerance, as they say, it seems to be the word of the day, is, is to be a little heavy, actually, on that one, not to be short with a 5-1 lead. So I'm pretty sure something must have happened there that, that caused that rock to stop about two inches above the or over the hog line. Same game plan for Colleen, though. Throw a corner guard, although here they're pounding this one as well. Jones comes out to get on this one. Mary Sue Radford we're watching the whole team. We'll watch it land just over the hog line. Tell you what, you want to think of how hard that is to do. Go out and try to throw those two rocks on, at home. Total of about seven inches over the hog line between the two of them. That's just about an impossible thing to do. And Jill Brothers is going to get rid of her own. Yeah, that's because she can't. She's not allowed to hit the other one. So yep. she figures she definitely really doesn't want hers there either. And, and Terry will try to remove the stones she just threw. And she might not. This one's going to have to do some curling. It is yeah. out there and the weight. This is going to just catch an edge of it and push it over the same area as the Jones corner. Yeah. And it'll make it difficult if Jones did want to remove her own. But Yeah, not the best display of shot making here. The first three shots in this end, but it'll get better. There's an outturn corner guard being called by Colleen this time. Figures she already has those rocks over there she can use on the intern, even though they're really, really high. Still probably usable. A measure going on over here on the sheet beside us on sheet three in the Arsenal Breen game. There's a good shot by Nancy. That's about the right spot for that corner guard. Now Jennifer Bryan set for her first shot here in the fifth end. Big 5-1 lead for Jill Brothers. It is a big lead. It's just not as, as big as it, it sounds sometimes. It doesn't take very long. You can score two points, steal one, and 5-1 turns into 5-4 really, really quick. I think it's the nature of how they got there with the steal of three and then another steal of one. Uh, just makes it seem that much more significant I suppose oh yeah absolutely and it is it certainly is a definitely significant lead no question about it now Mary Sue Radford with her first shot here in the fifth end Mary Sue looked like she threw this one back back in a little bit but girls are sweeping sort of here they go Colleen coming out again I don't know if I ever saw Colleen sweep quite that much in a in a game or only in the fifth end Sk skips don't tend to like to have to do too many of those 15 foot sweeps in a row that shot will be buried nicely behind the very high corner guards that are out there. Yeah, it's such a good shot though. It's kind of almost anything but that and she could have got at it. And you know what, she probably could still get at it but with the 5-1 lead, it's kind of like, well, let's not fool around. Let's get rid of this stuff and 
She does. Kind of left the corner, though. So lots for Colleen to work with in this end. Lots of action out front, well out in front of the house. Now Mary Sue Radford with her second shot. Remind everybody at home, we'll take a quick break after the fifth end, just a five minute break the teams get. Commentators get the break as well. So it was good. The only bad part about that, Joel, is I keep smelling all the food that John's got on over here. It certainly smells good. He keeps the kitchen open late, late, late at night during this event. So if you're thinking, well, I don't know what to do tonight, want to kind of pop down, catch the last half of the game and have a bite to eat, that'd be a pretty good plan. And we can see here as they're, looks like they might have picked up something there on that one as that one dove a little farther than I thought and see Jill Brothers cleaning the area out in front to avoid anything else happening with further shots taking that similar line. Yeah, it definitely did. It's unfortunate, you know, picks are so, they're so bad in curling that in the sense that it just changes the dynamic of an end so often and particularly later in the end and this is, you know, you're into just about into third stones and chance to sit two kind of buried on both and now you're leaving yours wide open and Jill can just remove it and, and just so much so big change in the end such a big change in the end so Good shot by Sarah Murphy rolls over almost behind the other guard but for Colleen like we said before there's still lots of rocks to work with and she's got four left in this end you can make some good shots. Real good opportunity yet to score at least a deuce here. Now Kim Kelly with her first shot here. We're down to third stones. Pretty light on this one, and that's kind of what they wanted to play, I think. Try to get some curl and get some movement, basically, and... Get a little flop behind that corner. They really don't care if they take the blue one out or not. That's just not going to finish for her for some reason. Just ran a little bit straighter than she would have liked. But is there. Colleen has to, or sorry, Jill has to be a little bit concerned about it with this takeout. Pretty big development on sheet three, Joel. In the fourth end. Arsenal picking up three to take a 4-2 a lead over there. Sarah's Rock's on the way. Does need to curl. It's going to bail, try to go the other way. I don't know if this is going to work. But maybe. Yep. Great audible by Jill Brothers. As we see things change on a turn of a dime here. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Sometimes when you're playing the game, it seems like it, you can't get anything to happen, but lots of times it really does change, and one or two rocks totally changes the, the dynamic of an end. So this one's a cold draw for, for Kim. Certainly no no need to try to play a takeout here. And she'll try to make the outturn come around. This looks pretty good. This one will come and rest right down on top of that blue stone at the back of the eight foot. Yeah, in an ideal world, Kim would have stopped probably that much instead of two feet behind there, three feet behind the T-line, maybe three feet above the T-line. But, you know, now you're down 5-1, you'll take anything, and that's, that's a decent spot. And as long as Jill doesn't make this perfect, you should actually have a, an opportunity to maybe sit two after this shot. If she does make it perfect, then you're kind of looking at just following her down again and, and trying to get a get an opportunity to score your two. So Jill Brothers with her first shot here in the fifth end. 5-1 lead Brothers has over Colleen Jones. Playing for a spot in the semifinals. A guaranteed spot in the semifinals, that is. Losers still 
can't hold out hope. <laughs> Depending on the other action here this evening. Yeah, it's a much safer plan to play your way in. No, pro no question about that, Joel. Hoping for others to lose and waiting for people to beat the right people. Just It works sometimes, but it's not the game plan for sure and, and not very comfortable feeling for, for those involved. Jennifer yeah. Bryan and Terry Udall were on that one for a ways but couldn't hold the line to get that one by the blue guard and she'll wreck. Yeah, Jill's got to be a little, just, just a little bit disappointed with that. That was pretty light. That would have only maybe just barely gotten into the 12 foot even if it didn't touch that guard. And, and really she could probably afford to be even back line weight there and still manage to end up with the same result. So sure not what, uh, what Jill wanted out of that shot. It's good for Colleen though. Gives her an opportunity to come around again and maybe maybe set up a two, maybe even a three if she gets one more miss out of, out of Jill Brothers. Jones sets for her first shot here in the fifth end. And needs to make this one. Sounds like it's curling. Kelly and Radford on this one from the start. Yeah, this is light too. Everybody's been like this end pretty much. I don't know if it's got a little tight out there. Ice has gotten a little bit heavier or not, but another one that really not very close. Chance for Jill to play a little tap here. Tap this blue one into the into the four foot button area. If she makes it, she'll have a real good chance at maybe stealing a point. We get pretty close to the fifth end break here. Just a couple more rocks to go as some of the other sheets have already started their fifth end break. Specifically right now over on sheet five, Gamble has a 4-1 lead over Team McAvoy as they're in the break. And now Jill Brothers set for her final shot here in the fifth end with a 5-1 lead, but it was just last evening that we saw this brothers rink with a 5-1 lead going into five, and ended up, Julie McAvoy ended up stealing three to change the dynamics of that matchup, and that came down to a measurement on the final shot of the night to determine a winner. Yeah, that's right, we, did, we had two games last night decided on a measure at the end, and I don't see that very often, but anyway, Jill just made a great shot here. Just taps back her own stone at the front of the house to sit shot right in front of Jones's yellow. Colleen has no choice but to try to do the same thing um, just for one point. It's, uh, it's a miss, bit of a missed opportunity for the Jones team. They certainly had lots of rocks to work with, lots of guards. You know, really good situation to try to get to, but didn't happen. So you really need to bear down on this one. You really don't want to be down 6-1 at the break. This is no easy shot either, so let's see how Colleen fares. So final shot of the fifth end here. Colleen Jones in a difficult predicament. Down 5-1. Needs to get the angled run back for her one point here. Kelly. This one's on gone. this one, and it's curling hard. I don't know. You know what? That one may have picked a little bit as well. Looking at it, and no further damage, but the damage is done. And damage is done, and Jill Brothers will have her third steal in a row and take a 6-1 lead into the break. We'll be back for the sixth end in about five minutes.
All set to get back to action here as it's been a difficult first half of this match for the Jones rink as Jill Brothers has stolen the last three ends for a total of five points in those last three ends, stealing three and then stealing a couple singles as well. So they're up 6-1 here as we play the sixth end. Yeah, it's certainly not the place you want to be. The only good thing for Colleen is that she's probably one of the only teams here that might not be rattled at all by the situation. She's played so long and so much experience that, that it's not going to phase her a whole lot. She's she's always been able to focus on her game, pay attention to her game, and and really play the game the way you need to play it. So she'll uh, she'll work hard at getting back in this. Really needs to score here in the sixth end, and probably needs to score more than one to have any realistic shot at getting getting back here, barring a barring any disaster on the brothers' team. Up goes the corner guard, not really a corner guard, kind of ended up almost a center guard, but it's a guard. And right now, any guard's a good guard, I think, for the Jones team. So Terry Udall gets set for her second shot here in the first end, or sorry, sixth end. First end back after the break. Terry playing what we refer to here, I guess, as a bit of a tick shot. I think it's going to tick too hard. And it'll go back if, if Colleen's able to get it out of play, which shouldn't be a problem. Sure enough. And Will and see Jill yeah. Brothers is holding the place there. For anybody that's watching that doesn't really understand that, if you, if you don't happen to, to know what's going on, somebody's coerced you into watching your first curling game ever. That rock cannot be removed till after the fourth rock and that in play and it's anything that's not touching the circles is in the free guard zone, referred to as the free guard zone and, and not removable until after that that fourth stone. That's why it had to be go back when when Jill Brothers team removed it removed it from play. And that's why you saw Colleen Jones sweeping it out, because she wants that rock to be back where it was. And we'll see Nancy Delahunt looking to place another corner guard. That's a better corner guard, actually, than the other one, to be honest. That's uh, that's about where you really want it to be. Just uh, half a dozen feet in front of the house, two or three feet off the center line. Perfect. Now Jennifer Brine for Team Brothers with her first shot. Again, they're looking for another little... Good shot by Jennifer. She doesn't throw those pills quite as hard as some of the girls out here. That's fine, as long as you can hit it in the right place. The weight's nice. Gives you a little bit more room for error, if you will, but as long as you hit it in the right place, it'll go. Up goes the corner guard again for the Jones team. Not much choice here. You really do need a couple of corner guards if you have any chance of, steal of scoring three. That's why we keep throwing the guard up versus just coming around this one. See Kim Kelly giving that one a little sweep as they look to replace that corner guard again. This one from Mary Sue Radford. And another good corner guard, a little different spot than the last one, but that's okay, moving it around is a good thing. Loving the logos here from the East Coast Credit Union. The full house logos that all go down as one solid sheet. And speaking with the rep from East Coast earlier, she she really enjoyed what that what that was, what that looked like. Or what they look like, I should say. Brian takes out that corner guard again. And her shooter will roll into the house. <laughs> Sit on the right side, 12 foot. Mary Sue Radford will be asked to replace that corner guard again as 
It's a game of cat and mouse here on the curling sheet. We have a measurement going on over on sheet two. Between Dwyer and Pinckney Rink. Looks like Dwyer's gonna win that one. Sarah Murphy gets set for her shot. And little discussion between her and Jill Brothers about what they want to do here. They're going to have a little meeting of the minds at center ice. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, logic tells me here that you just remove that center guard. I don't think you leave that there. You, you need to remove some guards. You're up six to one. There's no point in leaving those rocks around. And I know that that Colleen will come around the corner if you remove the center, so some teams might play the double peel, if you will, try to hit that high yellow one that you can't quite see on the screen, but drive it into the yellow. A uh, really hard shot. You know, certainly a difficult shot. I I think if it was me, that, that corner guard is pretty high, Joel, and I'm not so sure you can come around that and get it into a place where it can't be removed. So I think I'm going to peel the guard that's close to the house. The more rocks you put in play, the more rocks that Colleen can use, so I don't think you want to do that. Pretty heavy discussion, though. I think at the end of the day, the team's probably going to say, Joe, what, you do whatever you want to do. You're the skip, and we want you to feel good about what you're playing, and just go ahead and call the one you like. She's going to go after the high one, but she's actually going to go go on the inside so she's not actually trying to make the double peel here she's just trying to make that single peel try to hit it on the inside and roll all the way across the sheet and out the other side Sarah can throw a little more weight or, or does throw a little more weight at least than Jennifer so shouldn't be a problem for her to, to remove this and roll all the way out and she does good throw so here and now Jones looks like she's making the call to come in around that center. Talking about maybe landing this one right on the O in front of that blue stone at the back 12. And you know, in a normal situation in a close game and all that kind of stuff, that's, this wouldn't be a good shot. You'd rather just go around and sit in front of the T line, but not a bad shot here because you know, you, you need more than one anyways, and this, you put this one backwards, protected by the blue one in terms of being removed. This one's got to slow down a little bit, though. And it has to curl a little bit. And it does a little bit of both, enough to stay. So it will hang around, but just biting half of the 12. But that's okay for the Jones team. They, you know, they recognize they're going to probably need a miss or break somewhere along the line, and also understand Jill's game enough to know that she's probably going to peel this guard. And you do have an opportunity to get your two now, which isn't maybe quite enough, but it's better than one, and it comes without a lot of risk. Pretty much have to play this takeout now, unfortunately for for Colleen, I think. Trying to still trying to think about how you might get three. But well, she's decided just to play the hit, I think. Kim Kelly now with her second shot. Jill Brothers with shot rock at the moment, but that is just about to be removed as they'll get a hit and a roll towards the center. Good job for Kim, there's gonna be a possibility of a double, but you're probably was gonna be impossible to, to uh, prevent that. And Joe will certainly give it a go here. Just has to be a little careful that she doesn't get a little bit too enthusiastic and jam it on the, the blue one at the back, because then she might, she could possibly give up three. I don't think she'll, I don't think she'll 
come close to that though. I really think she'll just play this almost on the nose and not, uh, as I say, not get too aggressive with, with making the double. So Jill Brothers now with her first shot here in the sixth end. So no turn take out for Jill. She's got a 6-1 lead. Jones with the hammer here in six. Looking to try and get herself back into this match. It's pretty good, but awfully close to that blue one. It's gonna have a little angle and it is gonna wreck wow. on the blue and leave two yellows sitting at the back of the house. Well, you gotta wonder sometimes how unlucky you can be, and that was certainly unlucky, but at least you have a 6-1 lead. It'd be far more unlucky if you were only up two or three here. So Colleen's gonna put it actually in front of one of these ones. You, you know, you could throw it over there on the far left-hand side over by the E and East Coast, and the reason she's not, I believe, is because if you do that, then Jill's gonna play the double on these two yellows, which is pretty near a gimme for curlers at this level. So what she's gonna do is throw it in front of there and hope that Jill, when she goes to take it out and try to run it back, that she only gets the one that she's, that she's currently gonna throw. And, and not a bad thought. You know, you put this top eight foot or somewhere around there and and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for Jill to make a double. So Jones's first shot here with an opportunity to potentially get herself a multiple point end and back into striking distance in this matchup. Yeah, definitely a real good possibility of two and, and, a, and a bit of a possibility of three. Be careful they don't oversweep this one. You don't want to get too close to those yellows. Well, I don't think anyway. Watching this, but it has been more a case of being too light this evening for the Jones rink on a few shots. That'll sit at the top of the house. Yeah, it does look a little bit like the ice has slowed down a little bit in the center of the sheet. That's a perfect spot for Colleen though. Makes this, this long double as tough as you can make it. Jill Brothers with a chance now. Try and see if she can't double up a couple of those yellows to minimize the potential here for Colleen Jones. But again, this shot, margin for error with the angles, could leave potential for three if it's not lined up properly. Yeah, for sure, Joel, no question about that. I mean, the good thing for Jill is she doesn't have to really worry too much about it. She can just try to run it right back towards those yellows and, and hope good things happen, but. Sweepers on it hard, trying to hold the line. They get it on the nose, back onto one yellow, and it'll bump out a second. So a nice shot from Jill Brothers as she removes two of the yellow stones. And looks like she'll be sitting second shot right now, I believe. It's close. Yeah, good shot by Jill. Certainly, you just had to get it going in the direction of those rocks, and there was a, a pretty reasonable chance you'd get rid of a couple, but... Um, no guarantees, obviously, but she made a marvelous shot. So she's going to force Colleen to, to make a draw for two and take her 6-3 lead into the seventh end. They must be relatively confident in that it, they are shot. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, I know what you're thinking is that she'd be hitting the blue one if, if she wasn't sure. And At the same time, though, they'd have to hit and stick around and make sure that they don't knock their own out at the back, so. But they would definitely play that if there was any question, Joel. They, they have to try to get two, no matter how difficult the shot mm -hmm. is almost. Barring it not being being possible, I think you have to play a shot for a two at this point. And this one's coming fine, it looks good. And Kim Kelly and Mary Sue Radford making sure it has enough to get there. And it will. Girls have been keep sweeping Colleen's rocks for a lot of years, so and they get a pretty right good idea. Right on the T-line, so Jones picks up her first point. Since the first end, it's a deuce here in number six. 
That's two for Yellow in the Jones rink. And now it's a 6-3 lead for Jill Brothers. And she'll get the hammer coming back in the seventh end. Yeah, still a long way back for Colleen, no question, but at least you're going the right direction now where for a few ends you weren't. So it's uh, it's going to be a lot of hard work. Going to have to make a lot of good shots, but you do have an opportunity. Take another moment here just to recognize all the sponsors that make this event possible here at the Mayflower Curling Club in Halifax. Great event that's put on by the Nova Scotia Curling Association. Scotties. Obviously the title sponsor of the women's event for the Scotties Tournament of Hearts, the Nova Scotia Women's Provincial Champions. East Coast Credit Union, as you can see with the graphics in the house there, their title sponsor for the men's tankard. Tim Hortons and Deloitte, major sponsors here. Event could not be possible without the contributions made by those two organizations. New Scotland Clothing Club, they're here at the Mayflower Curling Club. Great products they have. Monaghan Square, Mott's Clamato Caesar, Sobeys, Kent, and the Printing House. All contributing to make this event what it is, and a great event it is, thanks to the Mayflower Curling Club as well too. They put on a great event, great food and refreshments here. It's a great atmosphere. Everybody's having a good time for the whole family. Yeah, Mayflower's done a great job, Joel, and made the place look great, too. It just looks tremendous out there in the arena and a very professional look and really happy to be here for this event. And Kudos to them and Christy Gamble and our host committee for, for doing a marvelous job. All the way around, just been a great week for everybody, the curlers and volunteers, and it's a lot of hard work for some, lots of hard work for the committee, lots of hard work for the ice guys, and pretty hard work for some of these curling teams, too, I'd say. So Nancy Delahunt with her second shot, looking to put up a center guard here. As Jill Brothers gets the hammer back for the first time in a while. Pretty good shot for Nancy. You saw her tapping her foot there. She's trying to get that rock to stop. Haven't quite mastered the idea of, or the concept of being able to control the rocks yet, but a lot of these women teams seem to be able to control them pretty good, so. Nice line on that rock, just a little tiny bit deeper than she'd like to be. Jill asking Terry to play the come around. She'd like to go around that to the top of the forefoot. I still think you're gonna see Jill go out and peel those guards in a couple of minutes, but. Teresa Breen just steals one on sheet two in the sixth end to tie her game up 4-4 and all of a sudden control of that game maybe kind of flips around a little bit from Marianne to Teresa. Big game for both, obviously. And Mary Sue Radford with her first shot here in the seventh end. Jones after picking up a deuce in six. Looking to claw her way back, she's down 6-3. Mary Sue coming around on the opposite side and that one will be placed at the top four. Well under cover. And Jill Brothers is gonna start to peel off those front guards. And there goes one from Jennifer Bryan, filling out the further out center guard. So Mary Sue will be asked to just throw a really a tight guard here or maybe a bit of a come around, tuck it in behind the yellow one, but 
Definitely can't be heavy. Looks like a pretty good shot. They're waiting for the big hook. Maybe just a tad light, but not bad at all for Mary Sue. It's a good spot. Like to stagger those a little bit. Good shot. Well done. That one will protect. Shot rock nicely for the Jones rink. As they are down as we play here in seven. Needing to find a way, claw their way back into this one. Yeah, it's tough. Down three, playing seven without the hammers. Uh, it's going to be quite a challenge to get back in this one, but you're out there. You got to play the game. You got to give it your best shot, and that's all you can do. Interesting call here for Colleen. You might see her actually play a hit here on the top blue one. Nope, she's going to throw the guard. Good for her. I think that's the right shot here. And now Kim Kelly with her first shot, as Jim mentioned, looking to place another guard on that yellow stone that's sitting at the top of the forefoot. Shot rock as we play right now. A little discussion here. Is that one? Doesn't quite cover. Doesn't quite cover the shot rock. Now brothers will have a chance if they want to go after that. You can hear a little bit over the rink mics. Sarah Murphy and Jill Brothers discussing the weight. Now they're gonna go after that center guard. Sibelius, 29, tuning in from Penticton and disappointed at how Team Jones is playing. I don't think you'd be the only one, Sibelius. Now, Colleen's had a little rough go these last few games, and you know, I wouldn't, still wouldn't be betting a lot of money against her if she manages to sneak in here to some kind of a playoff position or even a tiebreaker position. I guess say she's the one team that just goes out and plays the game here and doesn't really think about the big picture. She's been to the big show so many times. I'm pretty sure it doesn't uh, doesn't impact her thoughts or cause her great concern when she's out there. Whereas a lot of teams that are trying to get there for the first time or maybe trying to get back for a second trip or it's a little harder not to think of the results sometimes. That whole in the moment theory is certainly a true, a true statement. You really do need to stay in the moment in, when you're playing a, a high-end curling game like this to get to get to something bigger. So we see Jones replace the center guard again, and Brothers again will take aim at it. Sarah Murphy now to peel that one off. She'll hit that and knock one of her other own out as things get crowded on the other side of the sheet there. We're down to skip stones here as Colleen gets set for her first here. We'll see if she continues to try and guard that shot rock as she has done since she's gotten it in there. Yeah, it's interesting. I thought maybe when she got to her stone, she might uh, take a little different approach, maybe hit the blue one and try to flop in front of her own. It's definitely a better call if you absolutely want to steal this in. And she's almost in that position, but I wouldn't be shocked if 
She ends up short here and Jill peels it off if she does play the blue one and said, okay, Jill, you go ahead and throw against three. And if I may not steal one, but I might steal three. This one's gonna come into the house. And sit top 12. <laughs> and brothers now looking to see how these line up. Shot, I think it's uh it's maybe just a tiny little bit tight. The double definitely there for, for the Jill Brothers team. For Jill in particular. Not easy though. No doubles are easy, I find. Jill Brothers and Sarah Murphy discuss and finally get a broom placement. And we shall see how this one lines up. Currently right now, Colleen Jones sitting one. Brothers with the hammer though and a chance here to maybe double things up. Yeah, I think if she makes the double here, you know, assuming Colleen can get to that one, she'll definitely play a takeout of some sort because there won't be much left for her to work with. She throws a, a big weight pretty well, so I expect to be close. On the Not nose. Quite. We'll clear out shot but moves another yellow into shot at the top of the four foot. The effort, they just didn't quite have that one figured out as to where it hit it and, well, I shouldn't say that, maybe they had it figured out where to hit it, but just maybe missed a sweep call a little bit. Anyway. Looks like we have our first final of the night though, as over on sheet two, appears as though Hey, right, Emily Dwyer must have picked up a... A deuce in six, according to the scoreboard uh, online, to make it 7-3. Nice uh, both those teams are, are, you know, not in contention, and maybe they just figured that's enough. I know the Colleen Pingney team is, is a group of senior ladies, and they certainly are going to be going to the seniors in another couple of weeks and, and have to play a lot there, and maybe figure, well, that's enough for this week. So now Colleen Jones with her final shot here in the seventh. Yeah, I think it uh, looks like the guard, I guess, Joel, maybe trying to, yeah, really almost guarding the blue one as opposed to guarding your yellow one. The yellow one's hard to get to, but the blue ray, nah, rather the blue rays onto the yellow one, not quite so hard, so. Kind of a guard that guard three quarters of the blue and maybe a quarter of yours, and in which case Joe would probably have to play a tap back on the maybe a tap back or just the draw rate right around the top one possibly. Tap backs are usually a little bit harder than straight draws if you're if you're going to be playing uh, one other. So here is Colleen Jones with her final shot here in the seventh as she's gonna look to protect her shot rock and anything that could remove it. This woman looks real good. I think it's gonna end up in just about the exact spot she wants. And be careful, don't sweep it too much more so it doesn't over curl. And if it stops there, it's pretty good. And it will. Good shot by Colleen, real good shot. Jill might be able to make the, the double slash, if you will, but it might also not really be worth it. Okay, so it looks like you got a run. It looks like maybe it's going to be a tap. I, I don't think that it's the easier shot. I don't think that there's any reason for not just playing the straight draw, but maybe she feels she knows the ice better here than she does out further. Not too sure. But whatever, we'll find out in a minute. She's got to play the tap to the to the T line basically no matter what she's playing. She's got to get somewhere close to the button to score. Well Shot Rock is 
not full forward, full four foot. It's got a bite of the four, maybe a third of a. And here is Jill Ruthers with her final shot. Facing a steal of one right now, needs to promote her own stone to Shot Rock to try and just maintain one. This one's hanging out there a little bit. They're waiting for it to cross. I think it's gonna curl enough, Joel. I think it's gonna curl a little more yet. Little bump off their own, push it, and it won't be enough, and it'll be a steal of one for Colleen Jones as she picks up another to make it six to four as she inches her way back. So another one Jones on the Yellowstones. Yep, you never say die and Colleen's not ready to say die yet. She's working her way back into this down six to four. Still not quite there. You need at least another one more steal probably here. I don't know that a force is gonna be good enough. Better than giving up a couple, but I think you got to go pretty darn hard here to try to steal one. And they probably will, judging by the way they played that in. They certainly weren't running away from, from that end, and they just kept playing that guard, playing that guard, and playing that guard. So I expect to see more of the same here. Like this one to be really high or really tight. And it's pretty high so it's not too bad would have been like Nancy would have liked to have had that maybe uh, three four feet shorter the idea being you could throw your next one around and line it up make sure it's in a good straight line so that uh, Joel's team couldn't make the double peel without leaving a center guard for you now brothers I'll have Terry Uta and her first shot. They look as though they'll come around this center. Murphy and Brine heavy on the brooms early and they'll come right off. This Jennifer Brine gives a little message to the stone. That one will just stop ahead of the T-line in the four foot, biting a little bit of the button. You can see with the ice that Colleen has, she's not really gonna be too worried about that rock and even though it's full four foot basically, it's just gonna basically ignore it. And I think she's just throwing a guard to be honest. I don't even think she's trying to get this one in the house. Quite curling to where it's going to be a real good guard for her, but I suppose it's sort of a guard. Stops. Does. So that works. So another rock out front for the Jones team. Say, I'm not sure that that's a, a one, but it is in front of the rings. Does protect at least a four foot area. Certainly guards Jill's blue one in the four foot area. And that's fine as well this time uh, this this point in the end for sure maybe a little mini tree I didn't really see it all but I looked over a minute ago and Marianne was sitting three and now it looks like Teresa Breen might be sitting something two by the looks of it yeah but tough to say without the overhead back to our own action here it's Terry Udall's second shot here to come around, she'd really like this to be above the T-line. Anything behind the T-line here is just, just flat out bad. Like that. Mm, Jennifer Bryan though sweeps that one to the back of the forefoot. Yeah. It's never good if you ask the other team where they'd like you to put it, and they say, well, just put it exactly where you did. That's So unlucky for Terry, just a few feet heavy. and Now Mary Sue will come down and try to sit on one of those. I don't even know if it matters which one. Just make sure you get around this guard and get as close to buried as you can. Well, this is not a this good one. looking situation. That one moved over quite a bit there. Yeah, it's a, not a good shot for Mary Sue. I think combination certainly light. 
I mean, it only had maybe top 12 weight at best. I don't know if it grabbed something. There's nobody down there cleaning the ice or anything like that, so that would indicate that nobody really felt that it picked up anything. Just probably threw it a little light. Now Jennifer Bryan looking to clean up that center line. Just a little tick on that long guard from Jones's rink. Just moves it a few inches over. Yeah, another shot, really not a good shot. It's, uh, Jen has to make, make a peel on that and get rid of that rock, no question about it. Gives Colleen the opportunity to play really this, a very similar shot. Mary Sue a chance to play another very similar shot, so expect her to make a, make a lot better run at it this time for, sh for sure. Kim sweeping hard. Nancy as well, but seems like Kim swept pretty much every rock in this game. They got to go hard. On them. Really do need to get this one in there. The line's pretty darn good. So that one will come down and just sit on the top of the full forefoot. And Jill just confirming whether she can see it all. But she Jennifer Bryan with her second shot now. Going to come down on that previous shot from Mary Sue Radford. And will get it around the front. And will bump that yellow back into the back eight foot. That's good. And Jill Brothers will sit two by the looks of it. So Colleen has a couple options here. She can play a little tap, just tap that back to the back of the forefoot and set something up for a shot or two. Or she can play the hit, play the double, really, is what you're playing. A shot that, as we know, Kim throws. So she's decided to play the takeout. Absolutely need to get to the nose of this. You do need to stay. It's like she might have thrown it out just a little bit. Trying to use a little bit of the directional sweeping. I still don't think they've got it quite figured out, but. So they got rid of one and hung around for number two and number three. I'm not sure what Jill will play here, actually. Jill just surveying the house now. See her processing the options here. And just looking for little indications from Sarah Murphy as to what she's seeing from the other end of the ice. Still looking. It's a tough call, actually, Joel. It's uh, it's hard to really know where to put this one. Where you're not going to maybe help Colleen's situation a little bit. So she decided to come around to around the guards, top four foot, try to fully bury it. Unfortunately, if you do that, Colleen's going to maybe play a little hit and roll off of yours. If she makes it real good, might put you in trouble. So just a tough, just all around a little bit tough call. Just cleaning it, but now Jennifer Bryan and Terry Udall will get on this one and try and bring it to where they will need it. Comes in the house right to the last moment, and they'll leave that one in the mid full eight foot, looking to see whether that one's second. It's close. Yeah, I think it probably is, and I think that's a really good shot for Sarah Murphy. I, I just know that it was going to end with Colleen having an opportunity to play this shot and if they make it really well it could be difficult but uh, that's about as good as you can do I think. Now Kim Kelly and Colleen will 
discuss where this one needs to be. Kelly now set for her final shot of this end. Good opportunity for Kim to make something really good happen here. Not easy, but it is possible, and if she's got the right weight here, this one's going to have to do some serious curling here on in. Not quite going to make it. Get a little... Touch of a roll, but not much. And Jill's having another look here at second shot. It is close between those two stones. The ceiling continues out here tonight, Joel. I, last couple days for late in a competition, we've seen an awful lot of stolen ends, and Teresa Breen has stolen one on Marianne in the, in the seventh end to go up 5-4 in that game, her second steal. Julie McAvoy stole one in the seventh end of her game to get back within 4-3 at Christy Gamble. As we know, stole one in our game in the seventh end, so. You, know, you talk about it in other sports, when you get close to the playoffs and that, you start talking about scoreboard watching. Now Jones is over here down, uh, down two, and looking over to see that Breen has just stolen from Arsenault and to put herself up. Breen wins and the loser of this match doesn't have a chance at a tiebreaker. No, you're exactly right. You know, fortunately for Colleen, as I said earlier, I think she's the one team out here that probably will never, ever, ever look over there and see that situation. She just doesn't do it. Usually she doesn't know who she's playing or anything else in a, in a bond spiel. So um, prior to taking the ice, that is. And um, I, I, don't, I don't think it will be a factor for her, but I think it could have been a factor for many other teams if they were in this position, including the, the brothers team, if this gets, you know, gets a little closer. If something happens here that Colleen can make a really nice hit and flop or something and steal a point or two here, then I think it becomes a, becomes an issue for, for possibly the other teams to, to not watch what's going on elsewhere. But I don't think the Jones team will. As mentioned, we'll let everybody know if you're at home watching. We'd love to hear where you're watching from. You can follow us on Twitter. Use the hashtag NSCurl. Got a few people chime in that from across the country all the way out in Penticton, BC. I know Sibelius29 has been watching throughout the week. Paul Brothers, obviously, keen eye on this match. Colleen Jones, first shot here in the eighth end. She's down 6-4, looking to find something to get her back into this match. Make the last the final ends that much more interesting. She gets the hit, she'll roll over. Just to nudge. Ah, great shot, that's about the best you could do. It was, you know, like I say, you can't, uh, can't make something out of nothing, so she did really well. So Jones sitting two here. Of course, Brothers has the hammer in this eighth end. And we have the wave going on in the crowd. Wow, that's impressive. It's a three-person wave. Oh, trying to get the, the downstairs it's, crowd going in the it inside. Is, it is up. Wow, they even got the fourth guy out and in the... the whole lower bowl is into it. <laughs> and now back to our match as Jill Brothers and Sarah Murphy discuss how to approach this. It's certainly a interesting end brothers with the two two rock lead as we're playing eight up six to four over jones certainly a lot of dynamics going on in this end a lot of rocks in play jones sitting two without the hammer well, we were watching the wave going on there for a little while so i'm not sure what shot she ended up calling here i i, I'm, I was thinking the outturn freeze maybe but maybe as she's playing the intern double actually i'll just gotta wait till i See her take her position in the hack to figure it out. Doesn't really look like enough ice for a freeze, so. Yeah, I think she's playing the hit, the in turn here, maybe make the double takeout, and 
That would certainly be a... Nope, wrong again. Playing the out turn, tap, freeze, whatever that might be. Just didn't look like a lot of ice to me for, for a draw. And Udall and Brine are on this one. As it's coming across. They want to get it. Looks like they're coming, trying to freeze down that one on the back eight foot. Uh, that's just a great shot, you know. That's not an easy, easy shot to make, and she threw it perfect and forces Colleen now to try to make it a little bit better. If I had a, you know, for Jill, I think if it's not going to get there, maybe leave it about another foot short would have been a little bit better. Certainly would have made this shot pretty much possible, and worst case scenario, then you would have had the same shot over again, which would have been much easier than if Colleen seals this one right on that blue one. You can't remove it. It's going to be pretty tough to score. So Jones now with her final shot here in the eighth end. Down. Looking to freeze to shot rock and force a difficult draw for Jill Brothers. Yeah, needs to make this one really to have, uh, have a real good chance at and it's still winning this game. She drops a two here and goes down four after eight. That's going to be a pretty tough task to come back from. You hear Jones saying, Looking let it heavy. curl. Does look a little heavy. And needs to come across. This one will glide past the button. Oh, this. So Jill will have the same shot for her second point. Just while we're going waiting for her, I'd like to just kind of congratulate the curling community in Pictou County for their Ship Hector Bond Spiel going on this weekend. Certainly not like this. It's strictly a social event, but it has 56 teams, including a women's team from California. So it's a pretty cool weekend. Here as well, though, a great social event. Took the headset off for a second and the buzz around the room is great to see. We're about four deep around the window. Yeah, lots of people. But the table's behind that. And of course, the rambunctious lower bowl filling up. That's right. So it's on its way. Joe will probably won't have much trouble with this. She just made this shot. Noodle and Brian. Out on this one to drag it in. It's got to bite the four. And we'll do that. Bites the button and that'll be two for Jill Brothers. Two for Blue in the eighth. And she'll push that lead back out to four. Eight to four. Yeah, two, Jones. Sorry, two very nice shots by, by Jill Brothers there. It's... Uh, you know, this pressure's mounting in this game, and she didn't show no signs of of feeling any of that. So, good way to go for Jill, and way to go for the Jill Brothers team. And four-point lead moving to nine is a pretty safe feeling. Just have to be careful you don't let your guard down at all and make all your basic shots, and you should be able to pull a victory out of this game by the time you're done. Take another moment here while we have the chance. Of course, you guys can come on down here anytime. We mentioned the great atmosphere that's going on. Starting tomorrow, as this is the last draw, I'm not going to tell you what the price was to get in for this. Starting tomorrow with the playoffs is $10 per draw. Of course, $25 gets you in for the entire event, so that would get you for the playoffs as well. If you're in the area, certainly a great atmosphere, great food, very festive atmosphere going on, and of course, the main thing, Great curling going on all week, and it will only get better as we move into the playoffs here at the Mary Flower Curling Club in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And, of course, all of our sponsors, very important to us. Scotty's and East Coast Credit Union title sponsors of both events. Tim Hortons, always fabulous and always on hand at these curling events. Deloitte, New Scotland Clothing Club, on hand showing their remarkable wares. Monaghan Square, upscale living here in Halifax. Mott's Clamato Caesar, Sobeys, Kent, and the Printing House. So not much uh, 
think about here for the Jones team, just throw a couple guards out there and you know Jill can't remove them from play at least right now and she'll probably play some kind of a tick shot to try ways, but only not putting it too far over just to make that tick shot maybe that a little bit harder, perhaps. Or as you just threw it wide, who knows? But it's out front, perfect weight, and that's what she needs. Spencer Clement watching, watching the Nova Scotia Scotty tonight. Is it a comeback or a swan song? Go team Jones, hashtag NS Curl. Jones has certainly come back a bit here in the second half of this match, but it's running out of ends. Yeah, well, uh, just while we have a little bit of a lull here, the um, Scotty's competition's all across the country going on this weekend, and it's, um, you know, by the time the weekend's over, we'll probably seven or eight of the province will have declared their champions, and just to give you a little update, Northern Ontario, Kristen McCarville's leading their event at 4-0. British Columbia, Columbia the ever-present Kelly Scott, who's who's been around for a long time, leading that competition at five and one. In Manitoba, Christy McDonald's at five and oh. Christy plays most of the Grand Slam events these days and having a good year at Manitoba. She's five and oh. In Alberta, Val Sweeting, they played a little different format there, triple knockout. Val won the, the A side, waiting for people to come out of the B and C side before she plays again. Quebec, Marie-France LaRouche at six and two, back from a few years off perennial contender from Quebec, and even at the national event. And of Ontario, Rachel Homan, just basically just blowing everybody away at 8-0. And I think she's already guaranteed a place in her playoff in Ontario. So that's about it, lots of, lots of competitions. By Sunday we'll have most of the provincial champions crowned in, in the country. So Colleen throw another corner guard up here and Jill will continue peeling away and at some point Colleen will try to come around. She's she's working hard to get a three is the reason there's two guards going up. It's almost impossible to get three behind one guard without a without a complete miss. At least with the second corner guard here and maybe a nose hit would be good for her and she then she'd come around and then she has a realistic shot at getting three. Theory being you need one corner guard to get to get two and you need two corner guards to get three. And you need some help. <laughs> no question Certainly about at that. this point, down by four, needs to pull back to within one and then try for a steal in ten to have any hope. So now we'll see Jennifer Bryan. It's her second shot here. Just looking to remove those that corner guard. She will, and then just roll towards the center. So the shooter remains. So the possibility of morning tiebreaker still alive here at the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts competition at the Mayflower Curling Club. Tie game on sheet three with the Breen and Arsenal foursome. And as we said earlier, if Arsenal game, there will be a tiebreaker tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Not 100% sure who it's going to be yet, but it would most likely be between Teresa Breen and, and uh, Colleen Jones. But on the other side of that, if Teresa Breen wins that, there will not be a tiebreaker tomorrow morning. Everybody will get to sleep in, including the ice crew, which they probably greatly appreciate because they've had a very, very long week here. John, Wall's, John Wall and his guys and his crew have uh, put in a tremendous effort with the provincial competition this year. And we see Mary Sue Radford's attempt there to come around those center guards. Just a little too tight on the center guard. Rec yeah, and unfortunately for them, it's a really good chance of at least a double, maybe a triple here if Sarah Murphy can throw it down there hard enough. And there might not be much left out in front. So it needs to back up a little bit for them. And it does. It's one. And left a little bit, but not a lot. Yellow will 
remain in just in front of the house as a potential tight guard for the Jones team. Yeah, Colleen called the come around the center one, the out turn around the center one, and I would have thought she'd go around the corner. A couple of her teammates thought she should go around the corner, but she's staying with this call. So it's an out turn draw. It is her own st stone she's coming around, but at this point, you'll come around anybody's stone. Working hard here, Mary Sue going really hard on this one. Nancy doing her thing as the front sweeper and Colleen coming out to help. This is a good looking shot. You need to bury a little bit. Uh, very nice by Kim Kelly. That at all, she'll run that front one off. She may take a shot at doubling them off, but I wouldn't be too surprised if she just takes the single as well. Try to double it off, all of a sudden you might hit it, roll it behind the corner guard, and and now a three is back in play. So a little surprise here, but not a bad call if you make it. Left as far as Colleen Jones's team's rocks go. Calling on Sarah Murphy, looking for the nose hit to run this back. A little off the nose, but we'll still I'd say that's perfect. Him. Great shot, great shot. There's still a couple guards for Colleen to work for, but work with rather. But Sarah threw a real good stone there, made the double that, Col that Jill called and did her job. So now it'll be up to Skipper Jill Brothers to make sure that the Jones team doesn't get more than me. Maximum two here. Pretty well prepared to give up two if it comes to that. They just definitely don't want to give up three. So Kim Kelly now. Look at Come around. Another great shot. Kim threw two pistols here in this end. So yes, her second shot as she will bury that one fully around that corner guard. Just on the other side of the tee line. She might be a little tempted to go after this one. She might be uh, an inch of it, but from the left-hand hack, since she's a right-handed player, I think it'd be pretty tough to, to do anything but peel this guard off, really. Colleen's hoping she does anything but peel the guard off, so that's usually a pretty good indicator that that's what you should do. And she will. Christy Gamble picked up a couple in the eighth to go back up on Julie McAvoy by three. So they're playing nine at 6-3 score in the, the battle of the, the only teams out here who this game doesn't really matter to from a playoff point of view. A personal level certainly does. I talked to Christy before the this game, and she was saying that you know their their real goal for the week was to try to try to be a little bit in contention, maybe win three games, and recognizing their new team and not super experienced and very realistic goals, and they'd like to achieve those. Three would certainly give them that. Jill playing the peel looks pretty good from here. Sure enough, no problem at all. Now it's down to Skip Stones after Jill Brothers peels off that corner guard of her own, exposing Colleen's only shot sitting in the house. Jones will get set for her first shot. Not much you can do here, Joel really just split the house. Maybe put this one over behind the guard somewhere, but it it doesn't much matter to be honest if it's behind the guard. Colleen's, or Colleen Jill's gonna hit the the easiest one of the two, so if it's wide open, she might hit it, but if it's anywhere near that side of the sheet and the guard's even remotely in play, she'll just hit the one in the, in the eight foot and that Colleen player shot for two and go to the 10th end up two with the hammer and you don't lose too many of those. I know she gave up two, steal two today and to lose a game, but that's not gonna happen very often to a team of that, that caliber. So good job by Colleen. Her sweepers are saying, 
Oh my God, Colleen, like just a couple more feet wouldn't have been a bad thing. Didn't have to be that, that fussy, but they got it there. Need an extra few seconds before they have to sweep the next one. Colleen's team, like Colleen Pingley's team, is a, actually a senior team that'll be competing in Anaganish at the the, uh, the Highlander Curling Club here in a, in a couple of weeks in the seniors, ladies senior provincials. So many really good teams in that. It's it's actually scary. There's three, maybe four teams that could have easily been here. We had two of them. Very, very good talent. And they had just into the senior ladies division here in Nova Scotia. And here is Jill Brothers. Final shot here. Ninth end. She has an 8-4 lead, just looking to minimize any opportunity that Colleen Jones has. Nice safe shot by Jill. As we said a number of times, Jill just slides really, really straight. Always slides at the broom, so really just make sure you get out of the hack half decent and, and do your thing, and she did. And uh, Nice shot. Now Colleen will try to duplicate that and pick up her two and and hope some kind of magic happens in the 10th end for her. Needs to stay on this one first because I can tell you what, stealing two is going to be tough. Stealing three is going to be just about impossible, so you do need to stay on this shot. And here is the final shot in the ninth end. Jones needs to remove the blue and her shooter get a deuce and just pull the within two as we'll head home to ten. She'll pick up two for Jones and yellow. Make it an eight six lead for Jill Brothers as she'll have the hammer up two coming home. Yeah, good shot by Colleen though. Like we said, that's her outturn takeout. That's her claim to fame and bread and butter and all that kind of stuff. And uh, she throws it as good as anybody and she had no trouble making that shot. Well, the plan here, throw two guards up. Both trying to lie. She's been trying to do most of the last four, five, six ends because they've been down for most of this game. And then get around there and try to get two of them around before Jill has a chance to hit them. Jones out again, trying to get this one just across the hog line. And they will, and we'll sit there as a high center guard. How much perfect though, Joel? That's really when you want that, that guard. You want to be just, just a foot or two over the hog line. You do want the second one to be behind it. Quite a bit further down around the Deloitte logo would be perfect. Joel's going to try the tick shot. I haven't seen a lot of the women's teams here, or the men's teams, but I haven't seen a lot of teams here playing the, the tick shot a lot and haven't seen it happen successfully even less. So, um, see what happens here. This is going to be way too thick, I think. Yeah. Colleen's got to work really hard. She needs to get this to the boards. And she, and she will. does. Just a little late in the sweep call there. I don't know if teams down here are really doing a lot of practice with that tick shot, but that just takes a whole lot of work. And on TV, a lot of the teams are making it look pretty easy these days, but I'm guessing that they do a do a lot of practice with that shot. Not an easy shot. The other thing here is quite often where your home curling club doesn't have the kind of you have on a surface like this, so it's a, it's a quite a difference trying to play that shot when it's going to curl a foot and a half than when it's going to curl six inches. So Nancy will try to come around this guard. Really needs to get a bye. Hitting that guard would not be a good thing. And this one's light and coming across. And it's just gonna duplicate that center guard. Yeah, it's a problem for all kinds of reasons. One, it makes the double pretty easy when, it, when Jill gets a chance to play it. And number two, they're so darn long that even if she doesn't make it, it's gonna be hard to them a whole lot. 
Should have thrown one out in the wings. You might as well throw it through if you're gonna throw it in the wings. There's not a lot of not a lot of point in putting this in the house. You already have enough points to win. I think they'll throw it through when they finally get finished talking about it. They don't have a coach here, so the coach isn't downtown, downstairs jumping up and down saying, what are you doing? Could you not, uh, in, in terms of wanting to throw this through and making sure this stone is just burned, is it not possible just even enough to quickly have it go hard to the right off the boards early? Hell, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, no reason why you couldn't, Joel, to be serious. To be honest, uh, that would work. To me, Some I've always thought that there was easier ways to make a shot not count. Than just, yeah, okay, yeah, you know, you might be right. Sometimes you'll see when the situation when there's lots of rocks and a team knows they can't make a shot and they're trying to throw it away, that's kind of what they do. They just throw it over to the side and and then rather than throw it through and take a chance of something bad happening. But I guess the theory is the rock has to get down here anyway. So if you're going to throw it to the board, somebody's going to have to kick it down. It might be just easier just to throw it down. So you're telling me they don't want to move the rocks very hard? Uh, no, no, they're <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're pretty lazy sometimes as curlers. We just figure, if I don't if I don't have to take it down, you can just throw it. That's a lot easier. So we'll see, Mary Sue Radford now. She'll try and come around these high center guards that have been placed. This one looks. Not sure if she's trying to get it in or not. Doesn't like look like. Trying to place it as a, another tight center guard. You know, a pretty smart call, really, by Colleen. It's uh, it's probably better there than if it had to come in. To be honest, if she goes in with it and Jill gets rid of all these rocks, it's gonna be hard to do because you're definitely gonna need a guard somewhere, and maybe better off just to leave it there and see what happens. Jen throwing a little more weight here. Earlier, she wasn't throwing this much weight on peels. So it's got to curl a little bit or it's going to stay, and I think that's what's going to happen. So a little bit more to work with for Colleen Jones. and It ain't over yet. That one's in. So the intern come around by Colleen Jones. Time to come into the house now. You got a couple of guards out there to work with and no need to throw another one. Throw this one in and they'll peel a guard and then come around again and they'll probably peel a guard again. You throw up a guard and work our way towards the end of the end. End of the end of potential matches. Yeah, absolutely. That's a definite possibility. This one looks short. 8-6 lead for Jill Brothers as we play here in 10. Mary Sue cheering them on. I don't know if you call that cheering them on, really, when you're screaming at somebody to sweep hard. I always say you're cheering them on. I guess really you're not. Motivating. Yeah, that's a better word. You're I motivating them, yeah. I wouldn't call what Mary Sue was doing screaming either. Well, no, maybe not, but I, she should have been screaming. So here's the peel attempt by the Brothers team. Jennifer Bryan on her second stone, and... Threw that one pretty nice out of her hand. Looked real good. Should be fine. Just gonna catch that thin and yeah, maybe hit it a little thicker would have been good. But it does a job. Gets it to where it needs to be. And so we're getting a measurement over on sheet three. Not sure if it's for. Likely not for what was shot rock, but. Yeah, I don't know, Joel. It's kind of interesting because there's two rocks there still. Yeah, so well, we saw this earlier where it was that they were measuring. They had already removed what was shot rock. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, and okay, yeah. seeing what might have been Number second two. or third, I, depending yeah. on. Yeah, I see what you mean. You meant maybe as compared to the six-foot measure just to see if it was touching the circle? Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're doing. They've... Okay, oh, well. there we go. So in the meantime... So now they're taking the stick out. This is a very confusing thing over there, but anyway, we better come back here and check out what's going on here. Jones puts up another center guard. And once again, the peel attempt. I'll tell you, though, Colleen's got a little something going on here. If crowd's pretty happy they got that done on G3. 
So here's the peel. Sarah Murphy will just try to peel this one off and Colleen might throw it back up there again. I know one thing, at the end of the game, or at the end of the sand, she's going to, oh, this is going to help. Uh, a little bit unfortunate for the Jones team. Good luck for the brothers team, but that's okay. One more guard going up. Careful, you better keep counting them because you don't want to run out of rocks. So all of a sudden throw a guard and find out you don't have enough rocks to catch up. That would be a bad thing. So Breen ends up two on the other sheet there. Wow. Never really saw that coming. I didn't think there was much going on over there when I looked over earlier, but takes obviously a seven, enough. Takes a 7-5 lead. Of course, coming home, that have consequences on this match. And what happens to And another high guard placed by Kim Kelly for the Jones rink as they look to try and find a way to steal, the, some, steal themselves some points here and get back into this match as we're coming home in 10. Jones is down by two. Yeah, looking like more imperative that. And Jill Brothers is going to take a timeout to discuss what they want to do here. I still think it's the same plan. It's just a matter of you're taking the high guard or the short guard. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe if we can get a chance to see if we can hear a little bit more. bit of concern about the, where the blue rock is and possibly jamming it. I don't think you need to worry about it. I don't think it's even possible from where those rocks are. seconds left in the timeout and really see Sarah Murphy and Jill doing a session. Yeah, this is where uh, having a coach on board might be a little bit helpful. It's going to peel the high one. There's nothing wrong with that call at all. Uh, the left-hand side's gotten a little messed up over there. She originally was in a position where she could play the left, the out turn come around here around the two yellows, uh, the one in the 12 and the, the one on the delayed sign. Fortunately, that corner guard over there is now taking that away, so she'd have to go in turn. Not quite as much room to work with the way the stagger is. But for now, peel the center guard and, and see what happens. So, final shot here from Sarah Murphy. Third stone here, and they're calling for this one hard right out of their hand. Because it's looking, come, hits it thick. Does Not manage one. to miss the one in the house at least. How much choice for Colleen now? I think you have to come around this one, and you only have two rocks to come. I don't think you can go on the O turn. She wants to go to the O turn, but, well, maybe. But it's tight. Is looking to see what hole might be there. She's going to come back across to this one, though. Yeah, I think that's a little more, a little more on the the possible side. The other one was pretty tough. You're going to have to skinny the outside guard, skinny that inside guard, and this way at least you just have to work guard. Nice double by Christy Gamble on sheet five. As she looks to to win her third in a row. Colleen won't really care how deep this one is. This can go to the back of the eight foot even. It won't be a big problem if it does. Just needs to be buried. So Colleen Jones gets set for her first shot here in the 10th end. Trying to find a way to fight back in this one as she's down too as we play 
what could be the final end. Here, say a lot of room. Line is perfect. Now, Nancy's calling for them to get on this one. Gotta go hard, gotta go real hard. Need to get by that one. Calling the line early was that it was perfect, but as it started to come across, sweepers couldn't hold that line long enough. No, it just really needed just a little more weight. Be okay in the sense that if Jill ever rolls out, you get the chance to play it again. And bad news now, though, is you need really a complete miss by Brothers to have have a chance at pulling out this victory. The game has ended on sheet five, Joel. Christy Gamble picking up one, actually not throwing her last rock here in the fifth end, so she had, she manages to pick up her third win in a row, and pretty nice ending for the Gamble team. Julie McAvoy's just, just been a bit of a struggle this week. She's had a lot of games, just hasn't been able to put a lot of wins on the board, but good week by both teams. Good learning experience for them both, too. They're both pretty new teams, and and pretty new skips. So we come back to Jill Brothers throwing the intern hit. This is her first shot here in the 10th end. Calls for Breen and Udall to get on this one. Might make the double here and end this thing without one more shot. Nope. Should get the one and sit there for. You know, it's interesting because if Yellow rock and she can come around the blue one it's might have made this shot a little harder actually for for jill can't tell i'm just sort of trying to figure out who shot it looks to me like it's yellow on the overhead i would say it is yeah so these guys are looking at a couple combinations trying to figure out how to two rocks in the house and have them both guarded basically is what they're trying to do here um I don't know that you have to do that. I think Kim's just indicating the intern draw. I think that's probably a better option. Partly because I think it's just about impossible to get two in there guarded without, you know, well, it just is. I think you'd have to hit that top one too thin. Marianne Arson was going to score two over there. She's going to have to make a lot of rocks go away. There's four yellow ones in the house right now with only a few rocks to come and no blue ones. Still looking this over. Big shot. They've still got five minutes and 51 seconds to talk about it. Well, probably five minutes and 45 seconds. they got to throw it, I suppose. This, is, this will be the final shot for Colleen Jones in the 10th end. And possibly in this year's Scotties. I see what Kim's talking about, and I think it's a neat idea. I just don't think it'll work. I think that if you hit this one enough to get it in behind the corner guard, it's going to, your shooter's going to roll too far, and the yellow one's going to be wide open. So I don't, not sure I get it. Yeah, I think Mary Sue's right. I think that's the only shot. We see the whole team Jones involved in the discussion here. And Colleen will put the broom placement down and Well, it is a big shot, you know, it's um you know, I don't I don't know that Jill's gonna have a, a super hard shot on her last one no matter what you do, but you'd like to make her have to throw it. Make her have to make it. Uh, and make it as difficult as you can, and I just don't know that this is making it quite as hard as just the intern come around. But maybe, we'll see. I may well be missing something. You can hit, you're gonna try to basically hit about two thirds of that yellow rock, bump it into somewhere around the T line, just biting the edge of the A foot perhaps, and s try not to roll too far. Here it is, the final shot of the 10th end for Colleen Jones. Looks a little heavy right now. Two. 
Needs to find a way to steal two in this end. She's in the neighborhood of what she wanted to do, not quite. And she's going to wreck, and that'll push Jill Brothers' final stone in, and that will be the match as Jill Brothers defeats Colleen Jones. Colleen now just has to come in and hope that somehow Marianne finds a way to, to pick up two and maybe steal the extra end over here on cheat three to force a tiebreaker in the morning. That's about all you can do now. Well, that'll do it for us here on Sheet 4. Thanks again to Jim Nix. Paul McDougall, you've been watching the 2016 Scotty Tournament of Hearts Nova Scotia Provincial Women's Championships on Bell TV One. Thank you very much, and we'll see you for the rest of the weekend.